On this episode, we have some copywriting tips with Julia McCoy, coming right after this. Welcome to another episode of Trust Videos. My name is Joe Valle. I'm your host, Joe, and I'm here with Julia McCoy from Express Writers. Julia has a company with 95 employees, I believe. I That's saw. right. Yeah, 95, 95 employees. Uh, she runs a multi million dollar company of um, copywriting and content marketing. So I, I think she has one or two tips that she can share with you guys <laughs> on how to do your copywriting or how to start to build or dive into that world of copywriting. So, hey, Julia, take it away. What tips uh, you can say to people that are starting to dive into this world? Well, thank you so much for that awesome introduction, first of all. <laughs> yes, so the first thing I would say, um, gosh, with SEO writing, it's, it's kind of an art. You know, like anything you do in any industry for a long period of time, the better you get at it, the more you see it's like an ecosystem. Every piece has to be put together. So I've written books on this topic, but where I recommend starting, especially if you come in with like a brand new site or you're not sure if your content is achieving ROI, where I recommend starting, and I've trained my sales team on this, is to begin with keyword research. So research that SEO keyword. And if you're not doing that, you're missing out on all kinds of opportunities to rank in Google and get seen, get more visible in the search engine results. And Google is still the number one driver of all web traffic. So to optimize to be seen in Google is huge. So where do you start with looking for a good keyword? It's all about relevance. So you want it to be relevant to your product, your service. Make sure first and foremost that's true because if not, you're not going to get the kind of leads that will eventually buy your product, you hope in the end. <laughs> so make sure it's relevant to what you do, what you sell, what you offer. And on top of relevance, you want to look for low competition. So you want to be able to rank for a keyword that doesn't have millions and millions and millions of pages of results. You want something with a decent competition number. So you actually have a shot at ranking in the top pages of Google. Then you want a high search volume. So you want you know a large amount of traffic hitting up that keyword every month. So I use SEMrush Keyword Finder by Mangles, which is a newer tool. Those two tools are amazing for finding keywords. And you really have to uncover some data, spend some time looking at the data around those keywords. Otherwise, it's kind of just a guessing game. And you want to go by data, not guessing. So that would be my first tip, is to start with your keywords whenever you're optimizing and writing your site copy. Would you say that it's kind of like a balancing act for searching that search volume plus the competition? Because sometimes there's mm. keywords that have a high competition. And for example, iPhone. I yes. Say, it's a, <laughs> if you want to start writing content about iPhone, yes, that's a high ranking word, but maybe the competition is so high that you might want to tweak a little bit to find something in the middle. Yes, absolutely. So I've written chapters on this in my book. <laughs> what you want to do is look for a long tail keyword. So instead of just iPhone, think about what are the interests of your audience. Think about their interests. Make those your keywords. So for example, if I'm looking to buy an iPhone, maybe I am into fitness and running apps. You could write a list of apps and optimize for a keyword with like five or six more words than iPhone. So iPhone apps for running or hiking, you know, and if you get indexed in the top three of Google for that keyword and you potentially get only 10 people that are interested, but they are super relevant, they might proceed to whatever you're offering. So think niche whenever you think keyword and think long tail. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. I mean, people think that maybe have a lot of pets on their website, but hmm. sometimes you can have a low a volume keyword, but that person has that specific intent, and you might only need 10 customers yes. a month, depending on the product or that you're selling. Absolutely. And, and you might want to have a high end product that only has 10 customers. But well, people have to do that balance when they're, depending on their industry, yeah. Right, so true. It's kind of like, if you're a law firm, would you want to rank for some ambiguous legal term, or would you want to rank for 
something in your industry like Austin, Texas, family, lawyer, and then you can even add another word. And those five people maybe per month searching that keyword, one of them could definitely be a client. And what would be the second tip that people can use when you're diving into this world? So on top of your keywords, think about the quality of your content. That is so huge for actually seeing success in Google, ranking, traffic, and then of course building that ongoing trust with your audience. So the quality of your content, as simple as that sounds, how engaging, how well written it is, how much effort you put into the copy, that goes such a long way with Google. We've seen our content get in the featured snippets of Google, which is the top result above organic results. So content that gets in those kind of results, huge high value placement, you're gonna hit, get hundreds of hits, depending on the keyword. So whenever you think about the quality of your content, what does that look like? Well, Google has actually defined this, not to get all nerdy. <laughs> not to get all nerdy, yes. <laughs> There's a 200 page manual out there on this topic that Google produced what they look for in quality of content that they rank in their search engine. So two acronyms for that, EAT and then YMYL. EAT is expertise, authoritativeness, trust. YMYL is your money or your life, which is content that deals with your money or your life. So with those two standards, your content has to check those boxes in order to rank in Google and do well. So if your content isn't expert, isn't building authority, doesn't have that trust factor, think about getting an industry expert to help you write that content, because that goes such a long way with Google. Google will look at that author, look at that content, and rank it, if it checks those boxes. What would you say for people who are starting out, I guess you say, you bring the topic of bringing authority. And a lot of people may think that I'm not an expert at the topic. They mm. feel like imposter syndrome, right? Right. So true. Yeah. But however, I know that for in your case, you wrote for five years, right? Yes. And you didn't hear a peep. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> Very okay. few comments. Very few shares. <laughs> so that yeah. brings a point that this is something that's a long-term game. Yes. Right? So true. And a second point is that you have to be consistent and persistent, you know? Yes. Okay. So, um, for a person that, uh, besides those two points that I just said, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right on. Okay. Yes. Uh, for a person to know, I feel like I'm not an expert, even though they may have all the credentials they need for a right. so What would you say to them? That is such a good question. I think like we all face that imposter syndrome. I know developing my last course, which was a short writing course, I was feeling that the day before we launched. We were about to hit the launch button. I'm like, I looked at my husband, I'm like, what if someone doesn't like this course? What if I hear, I want my money back? And the day it launched, we had over 100 people in, in the next seven days. Um, this happened in September, the course launch. So you already have your company for running for seven years. Seven years, exactly. and you're I still, still feeling that. imposter syndrome <laughs> yes. just this year. So, so it's kind of a case study of why it's common to feel that way. You're not the only one, no matter how long or how little you've been doing it. I think we all get that place, especially whenever we're charging for what we know. Like it is so common to feel like an imposter when you're doing that. But in the end, I think. And I've trained a lot of people at our company and they will listen to all of our podcast episodes, read our blogs, and in the end, if they don't practice what they just absorbed, we don't achieve sales. Their role isn't high ROI. So at the end of listening to all those podcasts, I tell them, okay, it's time to go do what you've absorbed and just be confident. You have the knowledge in here and sometimes it's hard to translate that to real life skills. But if you just, even if you don't feel confident, <laughs> There's a saying, fake it till you make it, and that yeah. is so true. Like, it's true for especially us creative service providers. Yeah, uh, I love that you say that it takes a, a lot of time. You have to uh, overcome your own doubts. Yes, and self doubt. Like, fake it till you make it, which is what she needs, and this is what I think of fake it till you make it. It's like, yep, you already know what you need to apply on your business and the fake it to you make it is a concept for you to 
keep doing it, keep doing it, keep practicing. Which yes. is something that I love that you say. Because it's not going to, the, your first post is not going to look great. It's not going to be awesome. Right, and that's okay. And that that's was okay. me. Yeah. <laughs> And then over time, you get that knowledge and you build that authority over time. So, yes. uh, all over the time. So, yeah. Over time. And don't be afraid to hire that expert at the beginning. Like, there, you can kind of fast track your success, not to say you can get to success overnight because that's never true, but you can fast track it by investing in someone who has been there, done that. So, courses, books, blogs by top industry experts. The more you can absorb and learn from people that have been there, done that. And there's two types of experts. There are people that just speak and there's people that have been there, done that. So look for those people and learn from them, take their courses, read their books, and that will help you achieve success so much faster. Yeah, everybody has a mentor or a coach or That's somebody. That's true. Yeah, I think the worst error that someone can do is free, try to figure out on your own. Yes. Yeah. There's yes. millions of Google pages on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you'll start yep. pondering. Uh, and it, it happens to everybody. It happens yeah. to me all the time. I ponder all the time and I have to kind of wait. Action is more important. Is well, yes. that's the, the, the thing that it happens to Silicon Valley. Uh, fail fast, fail forward. forward. Yeah. Yes, yeah, love so, that. Yeah, you guys yes. can Google it to see which uh, uh, thing is that. But yeah, but the faster you fail, the faster you learn, and the faster you correct course. Oh, that's so true. Oh my gosh. I think some of the best lessons I've ever had running my business were actually from failure. And we had some pretty significant failures. <laughs> There was one time in 2016, this was just two years ago, where I thought I would lose my whole company. I trusted the wrong people and they ended up stealing thousands and thousands of dollars. I trusted them for way too long, didn't hold them accountable. And that almost wrecked our business. We almost went bankrupt that year. We had to actually sell our car. So coming out of that, I learned the lessons I needed to learn in order to build the team we have today, which is an amazing team of people. And we're constantly holding people accountable, constantly upgrading our skills. We never stay in the same place and we never take what we know for granted. But I would never would have learned those skills if I didn't have that near catastrophe. <laughs> your story is uh, so inspirational because uh, I, I was reading, you're writing a book uh, on the subject, but you yes. build all this company, right? and you were in less than ideal situations to start building that company. Yes. Uh, could you just, just a little bit uh, of how that was like, if you may, if you feel comfortable without talking about it, uh, so people can uh, get that inspiration and if they're trying to uh, start their own business, like no matter where you come from, hmm. the circumstances you come from, you can actually do this. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's the third book I'm writing. I've been spending this year, most of this year on it, is a nonfiction memoir of how I started my business while I was in a cult. And that was all I knew for 21 years of my life growing up. My father led this cult and it was a very tough home situation every day. It was abusive, a lot of things going on that made it just kind of hard to live normally. And in that environment, I was actually failing college. And one day I woke up and I'm like, how can I do something that will just inspire me that I will love doing? And how can I make money doing it? Second question. <laughs> so writing always came naturally to me. That was the number one thing that I went to whenever I was like, just needed a place of rest to get out of the environment I was in, to kind of like have a mental escape. So writing, that was, how I did it. So I'm like, okay, how can I turn this into a money-making skill? And as soon as I asked myself that question, like literally within the next hour, I was building my first freelance profile. Three months later, I had way more work than what I could handle. I was just teaching myself as I went and Express Writers started. And incidentally, my business actually gave me the means I needed to be able to escape this cult in the middle of the night. And it's still really emotional to talk about because I haven't shared this story publicly online where people know me for the past six years because like part of that's like, oh, I grew up in a cult. Like you kind of want to hide that part of your past. But now that I'm sharing it, it's like people are like, wait, you started your business in that environment? I'm like, yes, I did. They're like, 
that gives me no excuse. <laughs> and I love hearing that. So that's why I'm writing the story of how I escaped the cult, grew up, what happened, and then how I did something I love and made money, actually found success, happiness, doing it. That's beautiful, beautiful. Thanks. And where can people find you uh, online? Expresswriters.com is everything, our content creation agency. That's where I blog. That's You can see our services, our team, learn more about my agency and what I do. And I am on Twitter at Julie E. McCoy. I am also on Instagram at Fem Entrepreneur. Okay. Well, Julia, I want to thank you so much for your time for this interview. I'm sure it's very valuable to the audience out there. Okay. And if you enjoy uh, watching this content or any other similar content that science talks about mindset, tips and tricks, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out a thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.